if you've recently got your CFA exam result and it didn't go your way, don't worry, you're not alone. The exams are very tough and the pass rate is regularly below 50%. What's important is that you shake this off and approach your reset with a better strategy so you don't experience this again. In this video, I'm going to help you with just that. If you don't know me, I'm Harris, an investment banker and CFA charter holder who studied at Imperial College London. I completed the charter in 2023 with first time passes and 90th percentile scores at all applicable levels. So in this video, I'll step through how to manage your mindset, analyze your result, improve your strategy and ace the exam. Let's go. So let's start with mindset. Failing an exam is never easy to digest, especially if you put potentially hundreds of hours in. So if you're feeling disappointed, that's okay, don't worry. Give yourself time to digest it, but don't dwell on it for too long. What's done is done, it's time to move forward. At this point, it's worth reminding yourself why you're doing the charter. Hopefully it's for the right reasons, i.e. deep financial knowledge, discipline, career and networking opportunities and so on, and not just the three letters. The point is, if your motivation is strong, this is just a minor setback. You already knew this was going to be a bumpy ride, so now it's time to show your character. Anything worth having in life requires resilience and overcoming hardships. The CFA is no different, but if your why is clear, you can motivate yourself to go again. Now, here's a few things I would suggest to help you get back in the zone and rebuild your confidence. Firstly, take a break. If you're anything like me, you spent the time between the exam and the result stressing, and now that the outcome is unfavorable, you need to step away from studying for a little bit and get your head back in the right place. It doesn't need to be long, one to two weeks, spend time with family, friends, going out for walks, getting a massage, whatever makes you feel better because you want to be rejuvenated for the next step. Secondly, reframe the situation. It's easy to feel like you wasted the last three to six months if you didn't pass, but that's not true. Assuming you did actually study, you'll know some of the curriculum already and you'd have picked up some study and learning techniques that you can use this time around. Also, to study alongside work in the first place requires discipline and you should be proud of that and be ready to reapply it. Importantly, identify positives from your experience and then overlay improvements. You're not starting from zero. And finally, book your retake. Now, there is a six month mandatory waiting period anyway, so I'd book the first available exam for a couple of reasons. So number one, momentum is key. So you've just studied, so you'll be in some sort of rhythm already and you'll have some knowledge, so don't let this decay. And secondly, Parkinson's law applies, which states that work will expand to fill the time allotted to it. So the longer you leave to study, the more you'll procrastinate by booking in ASAP, you've set a deadline which will promote action. Now, given you've waited around six weeks for your result, it would mean you have around four and a half months left to study for your reset, which is enough time. Otherwise, you can take the following exam, which is generally fine at level one because there's more exams in a year. However, for level two, bear in mind, there are fewer exams a year, so you might be waiting quite a lot longer. Right, so next, let's touch on how to analyze your result and plan your approach. Now, this is a key step. You need to analyze your performance so you know where your weaknesses are and you can approach the curriculum in a more targeted manner. I put a sample created by 300 hours up on screen, which will show you how your exam result looks. On the first page, you'll see your overall performance. So the solid blue line is your result. And then the dashed lines represent the 90th percentile, the minimum pass score, and then the 10th percentile score. The second page has more useful information where it breaks down your performance by topic. So identify the areas which you struggled in. So look at your score versus the minimum pass rate. And the further away it is from that, the more you need to focus on this moving forward. Obviously, you'll still need to refresh and practice the areas you performed well in, but I wouldn't start there. Real quick, the CFA exams are highly time pressured, and if you're going to pass them, you need to master the calculator, but most people don't know where to start. So I put together a free guide with everything you need to answer questions quickly and accurately, which saves you time and increases your chances of success. As I said, it's free. Check out the link in the description. So you've identified your strengths and weaknesses based on your exam result. Now it's time to devise a strategy. Now, just because you didn't pass doesn't mean your approach is totally useless. You would have done some things right, but there's clearly room for improvement. Now I've done a deep dive on the strategy that got me 90th percentile scores. I definitely check that out. The link is in the description. Here's how you should think about things. So firstly, time allocation. Now I typically recommend six months per level. However, for a reset, you don't need that long. Four to five months is enough. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'd recommend taking the first available exam to maintain your momentum. As usual, one to two hours a day, four to five times a week is a good amount of study, which you then step up as exam time is. Try to avoid cramming all your study hours into one or two days a week, because honestly, it's going to be very painful. There's a limit to how long you can focus for, which is around 90 minutes. So after that, you're just pushing through and there's diminishing returns. So spreading your study out means better quality study sessions and it's less soul destroying. 
The second thing to consider is study materials. Now here's where you may want to change things. I don't know who you use or what you use the first time round, but some prep providers are definitely better than others. If you study directly from the CFA curriculum or textbooks, you probably realized how painful this is. The amount of information is overwhelming and it's very difficult to know what's testable. Now there's lots of prep providers out there, but in my opinion, there are two really good options. The first one is Mark Meldrum. His lectures are brilliant and Mark himself is very knowledgeable. So I found the study experience engaging and somewhat enjoyable actually. However, his notes are terrible. The second prep provider to consider is IFT World. They also do solid lectures, which I used at level one. However, their notes are their competitive advantage and they're superb. They're concise, well presented and focus on the most testable material, which saves you tons of time and allows you to focus on what matters. I'll touch on this again in a minute. So I'd highly recommend combining lectures from Mark Meldrum with notes from IFT World. IFT also offers a high yield package, which provides condensed lectures and notes that apply the Pareto principle and focus on the most most testable material which almost always comes up in the exam. This is super useful for revision and reviews, especially as exam time is. Now I've secured you an exclusive 10% off all IFT self-study products if you use my affiliate coupon, which is in the description, as are the links to the products. Now one final point on prep providers, I am in discussions with other providers to see what else is out there on the market and to educate myself so I can help you guys make a more informed decision. So stay tuned, I'll cover it in future videos. Now finally, within strategy, let's discuss your study plan. Now I usually recommend starting with the hardest topics, which are quant, fixed income, economics and derivatives. And this still applies, but you should cross reference this with the weaknesses you identified when looking at your exam result. Start with the areas you're least comfortable with as you'll need time to digest and review once or twice more. As I mentioned before, buy your notes, don't make them from scratch as this will save you tons of time and when you're doing the lectures, you can focus on learning rather than writing. As ever, make your first run through the curriculum a high level one focusing on the key themes, then come back and drill deeper. Check out my learning techniques video for a deep dive on this, the link is in the description. Finally, do end of chapter questions during your second run, except for the topics that you're already reasonably comfortable with. But generally speaking, try to do end of chapter questions as early as possible, because one of the reasons you may have failed is due to a lack of application. So it's one thing studying the content, it's another thing answering questions, so you should maximize practice. Before I move on, there is another way you could maximize your chances of passing. You see, the main reason more than 50% of people fail each exam on average is time. Completing the CFA charter is hard because it takes a lot of time. There's three levels to do, each with a vast curriculum or whilst working a full-time job, which is brutal. If you don't have an effective strategy, you'll waste hundreds of hours and potentially thousands of dollars on resets. Now you could go through the pain of developing your own strategy, but it's risky and there's no guarantee you'll succeed. Or you could let me help you. My Smash the CFA program condenses more than four years of CFA and careers experience into just a few hours, and it will save you time and money and increase your chances of success. There's time and money you can spend on things that really matter, like hobbies, holidays, and family. And when you succeed, a six-figure salary, access to top-tier finance roles, and an exclusive network are just some of the benefits you could enjoy. So you'll get my complete CFA study masterclass, which got me first-time passes and 90th percentile scores. However, I want to make this program as valuable as possible, so I'm throwing in some incredible bonuses for free. This includes an onboarding call with me to understand your needs so you can get max value from the program, exclusive discounts on study materials which will save you more than $450 across the three levels, career tips to help you land your dream job and access to a private Slack channel where you can chat in real time with me and other students so you can get support and build a network which is priceless. All in all that's more than $850 of value and it gets better. Early birds save 50% but it's limited to 50 students only so you'll need to be fast. And after all of that, if you take the program and aren't happy, I'll refund you 100% of your money, no questions asked. It's literally a no brainer. Your savings on study materials alone will cover the cost of the program and it's a fraction of what you could earn as a CFA chart holder. So don't miss out, join the waiting list below. Okay, let's wrap up with exam preparation. So as exam time nears, you need to be watching review videos frequently to keep things fresh in your mind. I'd recommend one to three a day, depending on the complexity of the topic. Do as much practice as you can in the run-in in the last month the majority of your study sessions should be spent doing practice questions. Now you can reference your notes when answering these, try to obviously answer it first time around, but if you need to go back and check the material, that's fine. 
The process of converting knowledge to application takes time. Also, the practice questions are often longer and harder than the exam, so don't be demoralized if you get them wrong. They're designed to develop your understanding, not replicate the exam. Leave mock exams for the last two weeks, except for level three, where you might want to start earlier, and make sure you do them under time pressure and leave a day of rest in between because they're very mentally demanding. I aim to leave three days after my final mock where I just mocked up areas that I was uncomfortable with and otherwise didn't do any practice questions and tried to rest my brain. Importantly, don't cram the night before or the morning of I'd aim to clock off by 5 p.m. and try and rest your brain as I said because being sharp on the day is a lot more valuable than cramming a few additional facts in. And finally in the exam here's a few tips. Number one don't waste time on questions where the answer does not come immediately to mind. Flag and move and you'll have time to come back. This will allow you to get the majority of questions under your belt which reduces the pressure. Also slow down and read the question the CFA Institute are very clever in the way they phrase things so they'll use most or least likely in italics and if you skim it quickly and you miss that you'll be looking at questions wrong. And finally read the question first then the information. If you read the information first then the question you'll then go back and read the information which just wastes time. A quick tip on level three multiple choice and structured response questions or constructed response questions are now mixed in both the AM and PM session which is a good thing. I would recommend you do the MCQ questions first as they take less time and then you have more time in the bank to focus on the constructed response which are more demanding. That's it for this video. If you found this valuable consider hitting like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that and otherwise if you want to see anything else leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.